Hey guys, it's Sekran here, and welcome back to another PC build video. Today, we're building the best $750 gaming PC. That is right. I'm super excited about this here today because this is to celebrate us hitting over 6,000 subscribers. Even though I'm kind of late, we're almost at like 6,200 subscribers. So thank you everyone who's been subscribing to the channel already. It's very much appreciated. I got a bunch more stuff on the burner that is cooking for you guys. So I'm looking forward to it, but we're gonna build the best gaming PC. So let's get into our specs. For the CPU, we want the Ryzen 5 4500. This is a six core, 12 thread CPU, which is perfect for gaming since that's all we plan to do with it. And of course it has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and actually the boost clock is 4.1. So it's not the highest actual clock rate, but all that matters is that it actually performs for the price and it's actually only $77. So this is a great actual CPU for its cost. Now for a cooler, we're gonna use the one that comes with the CPU, which is the Rafe Stealth Cooler. So this will be perfect for our six core 12 thread CPU. So it isn't gonna be too crazy to actually game on. It's gonna be like an Intel CPU where it's gonna get really hot really fast. So this will be perfectly fine. However, if you do wanna upgrade the CPU cooler, I will have one linked down below. There will be a better upgrade for it. So if you wanna spend a little bit more money on that, go for it. For our motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte B450M. This actually has Wi-Fi 5 included, has a one gig ethernet, and on top of that has one M.2 slot. So if we wanna add fast storage, which we plan to do, we're gonna use so. And this only got us $85 from Micro Center. However, you can get it from some other places for a little bit more, like $5 more, it's like $90. So just something to keep in mind, but this motherboard doesn't really need anything fancy to it. It just needs to get the job done. And that's what exactly what it does. For our boot drive, we want the Samsung 980 Pro SSD. That is right. This is an M.2 SSD with Gen 4 on it, which is pretty nice if you're a Gen 4 motherboard, but if you're not gonna take a full advantage of that, you can use it down the line too, because the fact this only costs $100 and it's really the best drive on the market. You can't really build a PC nowadays with less than 500 gigabytes or 500 gigabytes. I feel like the minimum now is at least one terabyte of actual storage. If you're feeling fancy you want to spend some extra money, you could get two terabytes, but I wouldn't recommend it because you can really just buy, what is it? A actual four terabyte hard drive, a 10 terabyte hard drive for like around 80 to $100. And then of course you have like one terabyte of fast storage. And then if you want to store on your games on it, because all games nowadays are server-based besides like Terraria, Minecraft, and those, those are the only ones that are like really hardware based. You can just get a terabyte of storage and then you're chilling. So I will have both of those linked down below, but for this, this is only hundred dollars. And of course you want to upgrade storage down the line, spend another hundred dollars and then you'll have five terabytes of storage on this PC. Now for the GPU, I'm excited about this one because I'll be using this for this PC build video, but also using for my personal editing machine because it's such a great GPU, which is the 3060 12 gigabyte card. And this is the trio version from MSI. And I actually want to give you guys some lore about this because there's the trio and duo version. And the duo version only costs $200 $86, has great cooling, does the job, it's absolutely fantastic GPU, but you can only just spend another $10 and get the Trio version, and you're only spending $10 more and you can get way better cooling. So just something to keep in mind, that's why we got here today, and I'm super excited about this because this card's very big, as she would say. So yeah, I can't wait to use this actually in this PC build and actually use it for my personal rig. I plan to do some other things with it, like testing it against a 4060 to see what's better. The 4060 8 gig card, or the 3060 12 gig card. If you are excited about that video, let me know in the comments down below, but I can't wait to test this boy. This is gonna be so much fun. For our power supply, we went the thermal tank, 750 watt power supply. That's right. Now this is only a rating of 80 white, which is perfectly good. I've used this for multiple PC builds in the past and use it actually in both my main editing rig and gaming rig, haven't really had any problems with it, especially since the fact that like, when you're gaming on a gaming PC, you should always have it connected to UPS. So like if the power goes out or anything like that, it won't negatively affect your actual power supply for your system. And since it's 700 watts, it's really gonna be pretty much good to go to treat your power supply to enough power that it'll be able to do the job done. However, if you do wanna spend a little bit more, instead of spending like, was it $55, spend $65, I will have a 750 watt power supply link down below that'll actually be able to do the same job, but it'll actually be semi-modular, meaning you can connect some of the cables if you don't wanna have some cables connected that you don't necessarily need for your PC for your connections. So, something to keep in mind. Now for our case, we're going with the ARGB Mod Tech. That is right, if you guys and I know I've used this PC case for multiple PC builds now, because it's such a great deal, it's $65. Gets the job done, comes with three actual fans in the front that are ARGB, that are 120 millimeter, and then one exhaust fan in the back that's ARGB, of course, since 120 millimeter. And that way it has a lot of actual positive air pressure and then exhaust all that too. So that is, of course, the case we're gonna be using for this video. Next up for our RAM, we actually got 32 gigabytes. Of course, they're advantages. This is actually 36 megahertz, which is really nice since we're using Ryzen. It takes total advantage of that high frequency memory. But on top of that too, it's CL16 for that low latency. 
and this only costs us $73. So this is like 32 gigs for $73. You can see where I'm going with this. This is absolutely amazing. So only 16 gigs is necessarily what you need to actually use the game on. But since if you wanna do more stuff down the line for multitasking, that's where the 32 gigs is involved. So if you do wanna actually save yourself, like what is it, 30 to 40 bucks, I will have 16 gigs linked down below. That's an optional if you wanna do that. Or if you just wanna go with the minimum of 32 gigs just to clear, just in case you wanna do more stuff with your PC, you can absolutely do so. Now keep in mind, everything in this PC video we're using here today, I will have a link down below. Of course, if you use those links, they do support the channel with no extra cost on top then. So if you do use those links, very much appreciated. And I will actually throw some stuff down there like the terabyte hard drive or different versions of RAM if you wanna save yourself some money like as an optional thing or just some even upgrades that you can do to this PC to make it even better if you want to. For right now though, let's get into building it. So the first thing we're gonna do with this motherboard is install our CPU. So what we're gonna do is just grab our CPU like so. And what we need to do is line up the gold triangle on the actual CPU with the black triangle on the motherboard. So we're gonna look on the socket, see that black triangle right there, perfect. We'll just line this on up and this perfectly, just slightly drop it in there and it'll just fall in by itself. And we wanna just push this on downward like that. Our CPU is installed with absolute ease. So the next thing we're gonna do is install our RAM onto our motherboard. So what we need to do is look for the two and four slots. So here's the two slot. So we're gonna open up this side open and both sides open. Now sometimes there's rare occasions where the motherboard only opens from like one side, whether it be the top. But uh, this one opens on both sides, so we're just gonna pop over these little hatches on the top here like so. And then we're gonna line this tooth and have the actual logo pouring towards our actual CPU, but also you can tell it's because the tooth actually matches it perfectly with the little tooth thing on the actual uh, motherboard. So I'm just gonna slip that on in like so. Apply pressure on one side. You should just hear pop. There you go, popped on that side, pop on this side, bang, our two slots installed. Now do the same thing, line up on the four slot, and then we just wanna plop it on in there, the force. With that though, our RAM is installed onto our motherboard. So the next thing we're gonna do is install our M.2, but before we actually install it, we need to make sure to remove the M.2 screw from the M.2 slot of the motherboard. So we're just gonna get a small screwdriver and unscrew that like so with absolute ease. And once you got that, you can just slightly pull it on out and Make sure not to lose this because you lose it, kind of be a problem. And we're now take our M.2 and actually install that. Now what you want to do is take the tooth of the actual M.2 and line up the tooth on the motherboard slot. So we're just going to line that up like so and wiggle that on in. Once you wiggle that on in, all you want to do is push down the actual M.2, grab your screwdriver with the small screw. And all you want to do is push it down with one finger, take that screw, line it up with the actual M.2 where it mounts down and just screw it on in. So that way it goes onto the M.2 slot of the actual motherboard and you don't want to tighten all the way, you just want to do enough that it's just in place. With that though, we have our M.2 installed, RAM installed, and CPU. So what we can do now is install it into our case. Now what I'm gonna do next is plug in every single cable into this motherboard so that way we can just put it in the GPU and start testing this thing. Now I do wanna ask you guys a question though. Do you guys wanna see a video where I go over every single uh, fan header or motherboard header and how to plug everything to a KPC? Because if I do that in every PC build video, it's gonna take 30 minutes to complete the video and that's not really, I feel like, necessary. So I feel like making just a completely different video focused solely on how to install your cables would be a good idea. If you guys would like to see that, let me know in the comments. Okay, so I have everything plugged in besides the only thing we need to install now is the GPU. So, this is the fun part. I got the GPU itself, the 3060 uh, from Gigabyte. This is the Trio version, which you can tell in itself like how freaking big that is and long that is. Like, it's actually kind of ridiculous. So I'm really excited to use this. Let's pull it on the wrap first. But here is the GPU in itself. You can see how freaking nice this thing is. It's only a eight pin actual GPU, but it has three fans. Freaking long. The only thing is this, it's so freaking long, right? But the actual funny thing about this, it's so freaking skinny. So it's honestly kind of hilarious. The back plate to this thing's pretty nice too, besides, you know, my sweaty hands, because like, you know, I'm sweating because I'm uh, building this beautiful PC. So what we're gonna do is actually install this next. So now what we should be able to do is install the GPU with really no problem. It's gonna line on up, barely fitting. Line up the two and four slots thing. That's awesome. Make sure it lines up the PCIe slot, which should just line up here. Perfect. Push that on in. in. Oh, there we go. She is installed. Looks lightly like it's warped, but I think just because how it looks. So what I do now is just take the last cable. Let's actually plug in our new GPU. And I'm super excited to test this thing. 
and we'll just screw it on in. We're good to go. You know, I just realized I was wondering why it seemed like the gel GPU was like uh, sagging. It's not that it's sagging. It's more how the, the card backplate layout. So you can see like perfectly parallel, but divots here for some weird reason. Uh, so that's why. So like, yo, MSI, I, I love this card, the pieces, but what the hell is this? Like this, this just makes the car feel like it's always uh, sagging. So definitely something uh, to keep in mind with your designs. Don't do whatever the frick this is because it looks weird. But that's just me for my like personal opinion because you're buying a nice card like this. You should just see it perfectly parallel and shouldn't have to cause you any worry. But this is just sus. You know what I'm saying? Also, one more thing. I was wondering why I was hearing a weird sound from my PC case. And it's not the actual PC that's having weird sounds. It's this guy down here. He's actually being very, very sus. What are you doing, Sama? What are you doing in that box? Looking in the box? You being cute boy? Cute boy. Time the moment we've all been waiting for. Will this thing boot with no problem? That's the question we're going to find out next. Well, that's alarming. Okay, so I think I figured out the problem. I think I just forgot to plug in the power switch and stuff on the bottom motherboard. So now, in theory, it should just boot unless there actually is something a problem. No. We're actually good. I legitimately thought like I messed something up because like it was sus. So moment in truth now, will we actually get it the post? Oh, there we go. So I got my scuffed Windows 11 drive. All we're gonna do is literally just plug this on up here onto the top, power it on, and then we should be able to install Windows 11 with no issue. Now the next thing we do is enable XMP on our motherboard. So we actually have a RAM for our RAID speed because it's 36 and we actually only have it on like the default. So we're gonna do is start resetting and when we're resetting, click the delete key on our keyboard so we can get into the BIOS. Once we've done that, we're in the BIOS, which you can see it's kind of been just reset because we installed our CPU earlier. We're gonna go to advanced memory settings, go in here and say XMP and we're gonna just say from disable, to enable and then exit and save and with that we should have our PC rate at the rate of speed and it should be no problem. With that though we should be able to go into performance under our memory which we can see right here is now 36 megahertz instead of default so our XMP is enabled which is awesome. So let's get into the game test now. So the first game we're testing is Rust and of course we're maxing out Rust right off the rip to the absolute highest settings possible. Uh, so we're gonna see how the game looks. So far it looks pretty good uh our ram usage is very high especially since this is rust for a matter of fact we're also recording this live on our twitch right now too so that way like we're just testing it on stream but we're not actually streaming this pc just kind of for fun anyways though besides the point though the game looks really really nice like what do you guys think about chat how do you guys think about the game so far the game looks fine the audio needs to be fixed gotcha i'll fix that later then okay so the game looks good so what we'll do now is do a different version where we're just like play this game on everything low let's see how that looks okay we have everything set to low let's see how the game looks now we should actually get better fps but it looks very very flat all right so our fps is doing slightly better now we're not dropping into the 50s and 60s below that we're actually now averaging more than 60 fps most times around uh it's nothing too insane though so that's good to see we are dropping here and there but it isn't really anything that bad but our cpu utilization is actually ridiculous it's actually 80 plus percent while our gpu is only around 50 percent then again i'm kind of not surprised since rust is more of a cpu bound game than actually gpu bound game so let's try something else now the game looks good glad to hear chat and i'm probably dying here <laughs> bruh welcome to rust so next up is Apex Legends. We have everything on max settings. And after we're gonna try the best settings possible for actually Apex Legends, if we're gonna get the maximum SPS possible. Next up, we're doing Apex Legends on the max settings possible. Uh, and of course we're doing the April Fool's event right now, which kind of messes me up because like, we're supposed to have normal guns, but uh, unfortunately this is not the case right now. So it'll be interesting to see how this actually is. And I'm getting seared queued right now, which is kind of funny. Our FPS isn't anything extremely high. Then again, like, Compared to like the 40, 70 we used recently, I'm not surprised at the same time, but this is kind of a lower end card from the 30 series, but like it's still pretty good. My question with it is now, since we're like using like high settings possible, how good will it actually be when we actually could do like optimal settings? So we're gonna turn on that next. Now we enabled Apex with the lowest things possible for just purely gaming to get the best FPS possible. So I'll be curious to see how it is. We're gonna hit more than 200 FPS. That's the big question. Okay, that is a significant gain. Like, holy crap. We only went from like 145 to 150 to going up to above 240 to 220. 
<laughs> Dude, that's actually insane how much FPS we just gained. Like, when I actually use movement, though, it, like, it definitely takes a tank. But if I'm not, like, doing super anything fancy movement, like, it's definitely, like, really good. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised on, like, how much FPS we actually gained from that, from just getting the best settings possible. It's unfortunate that we just don't have any actual real guns to use to really show it off of Apex because it's April Fool's event. Like, don't get me wrong, it's cool to have a pocket Kraber for this event. But at the same time too, I would like to pop off and like show you guys like some actual good like gameplay with the guns. So it's kind of the one of the weird things right now. Not the absolute worst though. The next up, we're trying Fortnite. We have it on Epic settings, the highest it could possibly be. So I'm kind of curious to see how this is. So far, it was being a little bit problematic to load in the game and we're not really getting too much FPS on Fortnite right now. It's actually kind of insane. Like we're in the 20s to 60s, below 60s. We're not even averaging like really high FPS. Once we touch the ground, I assume it's gonna be a little bit higher. I'm still surprised how much Fortnite has like become much more of a demanding game. You would think it was a game, I swear to God, if I die because of because I can't land, I'll be kind of annoyed because it just like took me like 10 minutes to load into the game. Okay, but yeah, the game looks really, really good. However, the frame rates are definitely not playable the same in the slightest on epic settings that is for sure i would never recommend anyone do this so we're gonna fix this real quick now we're on fortnite on low settings just to be able to play the game uh we're definitely averaging way more than 60 fps now it just definitely was not worth playing fortnite on a uh, epic that is for sure like I i'm still surprised at how much fortnite has become much more of a demanding game compared to, like what it once was when it wasn't too demanding it's like kind of nutty to me in all fairness but uh first kill what the hell weapon is this i'm using i have no idea what i was just shooting right there but i should have lost that fight if it was a thing versus any other competent player but uh we're now averaging more than uh 60 fps that's for sure we're actually doubled it to 240 to 100 so that's pretty nice to see kind of curious to see like what would fortnite look like if hypothetical i put on medium settings to kind of see how it is but i'm not entirely sure either yeah, this definitely feels way more playable compared to earlier. So let's get into my final thoughts on this PC. So this PC turned out pretty good for $750. I was honestly surprised at the results of the gaming PC for like just purely gaming. It did pretty good. And like Apex Legends, you saw we like doubled our FPS once we actually set the optimized settings for the game. We have like 240 to 200 to 300 at times, which is really nice compared to like our low settings which was really eh on the highest settings possible. It was like we're only hitting at low 140, at high like 170. So it was cool to see like we optimized the settings of the game. We got some insane FPS from it. And then from Rust, we of course got to see we're hitting like 80 to 60 FPS depending on like what we set our settings to. And of course, Rust was kind of limited due to the fact that it was on the server. But the one big surprise though, which I'm kind of disappointed was actually Fortnite. We increased Fortnite to epic settings. I was expecting this thing to hit like 100 fps 120 and stuff like that and just do pretty good but for some reason it just did not hit the result i was seeing and i looked at other people's youtube videos too and they were like hitting way higher fps so i'm not entirely sure did i do something wrong or maybe their markings wrong i assume i did something wrong but i'm not entirely sure either why fortnite was so low maybe i had something on i was not sure of the settings it was really messing with things and my cat's inside the box again being a weirdo so if you're hearing the noise in the background that's him uh, but yeah, rendering though, destroyed everything we rendered. So this GPU is honestly just a beast for like video editing. If you want to like edit on it, render, you have enough VRAM to pretty much do anything. And then you have normal RAM on top of it too. They actually just process things. So I cannot wait to use this GPU for my editing rig. But if you guys enjoyed this video here today, then make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed to me some future tech content. Cause we got some stuff coming out later here for Max and we're doing another PC build video. And what is it? Not April, but uh, May for next month. I think it's May, right? Unless I'm wrong. So if you don't want to miss out on that, get subscribed. I'll see you guys in our one. Have a great day. Tech Grant, out.